You must give birth to your images. They are the future waiting to be born. Fear not the strangeness you feel. The future must enter you long before it happens. Just wait for the birth, for the hour of new clarity. We're grateful that you have chosen to be with us this morning as we worship together. I was just going to mention something about our technology. I think as I do that, I'll go over and turn on the sound system. sound system and our audio visual with our folks. Are you hearing me? There it is. So we are in process still of working with some bids and with a project manager. Uh, a lot is going to change eventually, but for now we still have lots of chords and some limitation in the way that we move about up here. Thank you for your patience with all of that. We want to make sure that you greet our guest today, Mary Nelson, here in the front. Uh, Mary is our transitional conference minister in our Missouri Mid-South Conference of our United Church of Christ. She's from Des Moines, Iowa. She went to Grinnell College. Uh, I don't see our Grinnell alum here today. Um, she went to Candler School of Theology at Emory University. Uh, Mary has spent time as a pastor in Vermont, and she has been part of the UCC and connected with the 2030 Clergy Network, so young clergy across the denomination, has been a presidential fellow, has worked with the national UCC offices of philanthropy and stewardship. She is on the Board of Trustees of Chicago Theological Seminary and has the joy of being on their Presidential Search Committee. Some of you have been on search committees before and they know the challenge and the opportunities and the blessings of being uh, on that type of a committee. She splits her time between here in St. Louis and South Hadley, Massachusetts. Anybody, God's country, a little bit of a distance from here? She is delighted to be here with us for worship, and she will be our speaker series guest, uh, Adult Education, just down the hall in the Heritage Room. Uh, I'll remind you that after worship, when we invite you to exit through the doors on my right, your left, uh, you can take a breath, take off your mask, um, and then for Adult Ed speaker series, come back in with your mask on and go down the hall to the Heritage Room. Again, we're grateful that you have chosen to be with us this morning. One of the reasons that people come to worship is so that they can experience some peace, so they can let the rest of the world go, so that they can experience sanctuary. And we've talked about sanctuary a couple of weeks ago as a place where it's not only a place to rest, but it's a place where you also can strengthen. And so it's about putting things down, but it's also about taking up some strength and some courage and some grace and some power uh, some wisdom. And so we invite you to get in touch with that idea of this being a place of peace. If you imagine yourselves perhaps putting down some burdens that you have been carrying, setting aside the things that have weighed you down, clear the path a little bit for the things that have caused you to stumble or misstep, cutting the ties to the things that you might be dragging behind you, we invite you to experience some peace in this space, this sacred, holy space, to allow yourself to be touched by that peace, to be infused, filled, graced, guided by that peace. And as you gather more peace, we invite you to think about how you can be peacemakers, how you can spill over with some of that peace to others especially those others who don't feel like they have sanctuary, who don't feel like they can get out from under the weight of life, people who need to know that they're not alone, that you can come up beside them 
with gifts of peace. And we invite you to take a deep breath and to feel that Holy Spirit gift of peace. May the peace of Christ be with you. Good morning. Our first reading is from Ephesians 5, 15 through 20. So be careful to live your life wisely, not foolishly. Take advantage of every opportunity because these are evil times. Because of this, don't be ignorant, but understand the Lord's will. Don't get drunk on wine, which produces depravity. Instead, be filled with the Spirit in the following ways. Speak to each other with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music to the Lord in your hearts. 
Always give thanks to God for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We invite you to please rise if you're comfortable doing so and join us in our call to worship words, lyrics from the song, Gather Us In. Here in this place, new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this space our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Not in the dark of buildings confining, not in some heaven light years away, but here in this place, the new light is shining. Now is the kingdom, now is the day. Let us worship our God together, Creator, Christ, and Spirit.
please join us in our opening prayer, which is our United Church of Christ statement of faith. We believe in you, O God, eternal spirit, God of our Savior Jesus Christ and our God, and to your deeds we testify. You call the worlds into being, create persons in your own image, and set before each one the ways of life and death. You seek in holy love to save all people from aimlessness and sin. You judge people and nations by your righteous will, declared through prophets and apostles. In Jesus Christ, the man of Nazareth, our crucified and risen Savior, you have come to us and shared our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. You bestow upon us your Holy Spirit, creating and renewing the Church of Jesus Christ, binding in covenant faithful people of all ages, tongues, and races. You call us into your Church to accept the cost and joy of discipleship, to be your servants in the service of others, to proclaim the Gospel to all the world, and resist the powers of evil to share in Christ's baptism and eat at his table, to join him in his passion and victory. You promise to all who trust you forgiveness of sins and fullness of grace, courage in the struggle for justice and peace, your presence in trial and rejoicing, and eternal life in your realm which has no end. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto you. Amen. Thank you. It is a joy to be with you here today. And grown-ups, I'm just going to have to ask you to wait for a minute while I introduce myself to the kids. My name is Mary, and I'm new here. And I'm wondering if any of you kids know what it's like if you've ever been on a team. I'm seeing a head nod. You guys. Have you ever been on a team? Do you know what it's like to be on a team? I'm seeing more head nods. What kind of teams have you been on? Do you want to just yell it out? I'm sorry? Sports teams. It's a great one. Soccer. Soccer team. Sibling team. Sibling team, totally. My mom used to say, we're all on the same team here when we were you know, trying to get dinner together and it wasn't going very well. Dance team, all sorts of teams out there. You know what it's like. What, what is a team? Mm, yeah. A bunch of people root, to get, root together, come together, and form a fellowship. That's exactly right. There's usually some sort of common purpose, some sort of common goal. We're all working together to make something happen, whether it's that we want to kick the ball down to the other side of the field, or we want to make dinner together, or whatever it is. Ooh, I see another hand.
everybody on the ev yes everybody on the team includes one another and listens to one another's ideas because when you listen to one another's ideas you get the best ideas whereas if you only listen to one person you might not get the best ideas but if you all work together and listen to each other you get good ideas that help you work together for the common goal so did you know that church is a team? Did you know that church is a team, that we are all on the same team? That we're working together for a common goal. You guys have it written right up here, just world for all. And we're not like a soccer team where we're playing against other teams to try to get more points. The thing about the church is that the church is a team, your congregation, and then we're part of, you are part of a bigger team, the Missouri Mid-South Conference, and the Missouri Mid-South Conference is part of a bigger team called the United Church of Christ. And all of these teams are not competing against one another, but we're working together, team on team on team, to do even more good stuff, to make a just world for all. And when you're not at church, when you're not with your church family, when you're not here in the congregation, when you're at home, or when you are at school, or when you're out in the grocery store, even when you're by yourself, you are still always part of this team. It doesn't stop being a team just because we're not in the same place. It doesn't stop being a team just because it's not Sunday morning or Wednesday night or whenever you have youth group or choir practice or whatever it is. We're always on this team. And whatever you do is part of the team, making a just world for all. You always belong to this team. You are always part of the team that is the church. And the church will always be a part of you. Everywhere you go. That is a really cool kind of a team to be a part of, I think. Because anywhere you go in the country, anywhere in the world you go, you belong. You are loved. You have people, you have a team, and you're not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> Our next reading is uh, also from Ephesians 5 through 15, 5, 15 through 20, the New Revised Standard Version. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk on wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs amongst yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God help us find truth and guidance in these words.
Good morning, Parkway. It is a joy to be here in worship with you today. I bring you greetings. On behalf of the Missouri Mid-South Conference and the 141 congregations to which you belong, I bring greetings on behalf of Camp Moval and the Shannondale Community Center, our outdoor ministries sites. I bring greetings on behalf of the schools and healthcare and human services organizations with whom we are partners in ministry in Arkansas, Memphis, and Missouri. I bring greetings on behalf of the Conference Council, our moderator, Reverend Andrea Asselmeyer, and from the conference staff as well. I bring greetings also from Kirkwood UCC, just up the road in Kirkwood, Missouri, where I worshiped a few weeks ago. And with your permission, I will bring greetings from you to the next church where I worship, when I figure out where that is. And I come with a word of thanks for your faithful giving to our church's wider mission, where you have been a consistent leader throughout the years. I celebrate that you are a five for five church, meaning that you support all five major offerings of the United Church of Christ. Your giving is what makes our ministry possible as a conference and as the United Church of Christ. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And if there is a way I can help to sustain and encourage your enthusiasm for the United Church of Christ, please let me know. I am happy to help. And now, will you pray with me, please? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Be careful to live your lives wisely and not foolishly, the author says. Be careful how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise. The audience of the letter to the Ephesians, which includes us, has stumbled, maybe unknowingly, into the language of the Hebrew wisdom tradition. It's a branch of biblical literature that Jesus' followers in Jerusalem and Galilee would have known. It's less clear if the churches in the area around Ephesus would have been familiar with it. It's a genre of literature, it, Wisdom tradition is exactly what it sounds like. It's this genre that was focused on figuring out what wisdom is and incorporating wisdom into the community's life of faith. The book of Proverbs is part of the wisdom tradition. And there is wisdom personified as Sophia, a woman who moves through the public places of her community with grace and decorum and gravitas and sincerity, calling people to follow her way. One of the common themes of wisdom literature is this contrast that pops up in our scripture this morning, the comparison of the wise person and the foolish person. Be careful to live your lives wisely, not foolishly, our author says. Live at, not as unwise people, but as wise. Our author is really concerned with that contrast and that followers of Christ live wisely. Not because it's important to be smart or to be educated, although it is, but because in the wisdom tradition, a fool is someone who lives as if there is no God. A fool is someone who lives as if there is no God. Wisdom, then, is an orientation of one's life, a way of living that does acknowledge God, at the very least a way of living that acknowledges there might be a God. Don't live as a fool entirely without that awareness, that orientation. Live 
Live knowing that there is something out there that's bigger than you. That you are not where the universe begins and ends. Fools think the world revolves around them. Wise people know it does not. The book of Ephesians, and I do hope you've been loving the book of Ephesians this summer as much as I have, because I am so here for it, and I am not going to stop when this summer is over and the lectionary moves to something else. The book of Ephesians is a brilliant work of theological literature. The author, we say it was Paul, but that's kind of shorthand. It was probably a student of Paul's who wrote the book. The author starts with the cosmic big picture. What is God doing in all of creation? What is God doing in all of time? And then the picture becomes more narrow and more narrow and more narrow. What is God doing with humankind? What is God doing with groups of people? What is God doing with groups of people who follow Jesus? What's happening with your church and your community? What's happening in your home, your family, your heart, your faith? All the way from the cosmic scope of time and space to the choices you make in your home how you treat your own family, your everyday decisions, your everyday behavior. In six short chapters, Paul ties it all together. He says these things all fit together. Be careful to live as a wise person, not as a fool. And remember that you fit into a bigger picture that you did not create and you cannot control. You fit in to a bigger picture that you did not create and you cannot control. I wonder who you're thinking of right now that you want to hear that message. Your boss or your spouse, or your parent, or your kid, you fit into a bigger picture that you did not create and you cannot control. Can you hear it for yourself? You fit in. You fit in to a bigger picture that you did not create and you cannot control. Be careful to live as wise people, not as fools. You fit in to a bigger picture that you did not create and you cannot control. We are living at a moment in human history, American history certainly, where individualism, this idea that my choices are mine and mine alone, and my actions aren't a matter of anyone else's criticism or concern. My right to have mine is more important than your ability to be safe or whole or alive. That idea, individualism, is literally killing people right now. With illness, or with guns, or with hunger, or with debt, or with loneliness. It's an idolatry. It's a foolish choice to live as if there is no God, no world outside myself. And that is not what Jesus taught. We live in an age where it is countercultural to think of others where it is countercultural to love your neighbor. And here is the author of Ephesians telling us, you fit in to the bigger picture. There is more to life than what you want. 
you belong to one another. You are responsible to someone other than yourself. You are responsible to everyone because everyone is part of the picture, that bigger picture, just like you. Be careful how you live. Now, it's important to know where we are in Ephesians when we encounter this idea. You fit into a bigger picture. In the bigger picture of Ephesians, these verses are speaking to the early church, the Christians who are gathering, probably in house churches, and the author has not yet gotten to the part about how they live at home. Where we are, this morning's scripture is talking about their ritual life their congregational life, in contrast with the world around them. Don't drink too much wine is in contrast to pagan rituals where drinking led to groups of people behaving destructively in the name of their God. Instead, we should be filled with the Holy Spirit and sing together, creating beauty, praising in God's name. This praise, this beauty, counters the evil times that the author mentions. Be careful how you live. Make the most of the time. Take the opportunity, because these are evil days. Don't be foolish, but try to understand what God is up to. Try to be a part of it, because you already are, whether you like it or not. You fit into a bigger picture that you did not create and you cannot control. This is an invitation. It's not a chastisement, it's not a punishment, it's an invitation to claim our place in what God is doing in the world. These are evil times and you belong, we belong in that choir that sings the glory of God and the goodness of God's creation. We are invited to be countercultural. We are invited to belong to those who seek God's will, to find each other, to work together, and to praise God rather than praising ourselves when we do. We are invited to be part of what God is doing. We fit in to this bigger picture that we did not create and we cannot control. And thank God we don't control it. Thank God we didn't create it. God has done a much better job than we would have. The sin of individualism is one part belief that one can and should control the world around them, and one part refusal to care when confronted with the limits and realities of one's responsibility to the world. We are invited instead to step away from the idolatry of individualism and embrace community, embrace belonging, There is a place for each of us, for all of us, in this invitation. As someone who grew up in the United Church of Christ, I find it astonishing that these things even need to be said out loud. Our focus as a denomination from our beginnings has been this awareness that we are part of something bigger, that we belong to one another. We are the united Church of Christ precisely because we once were separate groups who joined together because we knew that we were part of God's bigger picture, whether we liked it or not. We were born out of the ecumenical impulse, the impulse to connect, the impulse, the desire to set aside our differences and celebrate what unites us. And that, too, is countercultural. Empire wants to keep us divided. 
because there's money to be made and power to be kept if we are divided. To be united, to be aware of this bigger picture, to prize our connection to one another and praise God because of it, that is an action, a value that challenges the status quo and those who benefit from it. The United Church of Christ is not here to preserve the empire's status quo, but to work for a world of justice for all. This is our place in the bigger picture. And it's not an easy place to be all the time. Be careful how you live because you are a part of something bigger than you. You fit into the bigger picture of God's love for all humanity, for all creation. We fit together, Parkway, UCC, Missouri, Mid-South Conference, United Church of Christ. We fit together into the bigger picture of God's love for all humanity. We are part of that bigger picture for good. And we can sing God's praises while we're at it. In Jesus' name, thanks be to God. Amen. As we come into a time of prayer together, we invite you to think about all of creation. And in particular, perhaps you are mindful of some fresh fruits or vegetables that you have had recently that may be burst forth from the earth, from creation on your little square of the earth. To think about all the acts of kindness and justice, compassion and equity, to be praying for the students and families and teachers and staff and administrators gearing up for collegians starting or returning this week and next week. For babies being born, Owen and Felix, Charlotte's great grandsons, were born this week. We're thinking about Audrey and John Norse as Audrey is next door at Missouri Baptist Hospital receiving hospice care. We're thinking of Dan and Kim Weiss and their sons, Ben, Henry, and Davis, as Dan's treatments for cancer continue. Kathleen Tarr, who is having a cardiac procedure in a few weeks. She just got those details the other day. Polly Rutherford and family, as they prepare to celebrate her mother's life here next Saturday at 2. Visitation at 1.30, all are invited to celebrate Polly Rutherford's mom. Visitation at 1.30 next Saturday and the service at 2. We're also thinking about Skip Larson and Karen and Janet and their families as they grieve and give thanks for Ellie. Tomorrow is Skip's birthday. We're thinking about all who are impacted by COVID-19, individuals and families and communities, the caretakers and medical professionals. We think about all of that and commit ourselves to each other as the church 
And so if you need support, if you need help uh, to get a vaccine or to do other things that are difficult to do right now, let us know we have a care team that wants to be of support to you. We're thinking about natural and human-made disasters like the wildfires in the United States, the aftermath of the earthquake in Haiti, the turmoil in Afghanistan. We're thinking about our St. Louis Association Covenant Partners, week ending today, St. John's Evangelical UCC in Melville, and for this coming week, St. John's UCC in Chesterfield. And I need to tell you that Tyler Wessel, young man from this church, 19 years old, died by suicide on Friday. Tyler went to preschool down the hall. Tyler was a sweet, sweet, sweet boy and young man. You maybe heard a little bit about that in the news without his name attached to it yet, but it will be. And so we invite your prayers. For Cindy and Ralph, and for Tyler's older brother, Andrew, who is home from Chicago, where he works. He just graduated in May. What we do as a church is support each other and come alongside each other, especially in times when there aren't any words that we could say to fix things. There are things that we didn't create, things that are beyond our control, things that we cannot change. But what we can do is come alongside each other to provide some shade or a cool drink of water. Maybe not even a word, but just a presence so that others know that they're not alone. Please pray with us. Holy One, we feel you in this space when we're singing, when it's filled with light, when we see the reflections shimmering through the stained glass windows, when we feel the movement of the organ and the piano and the voices tuned to give you thanks and to celebrate. And God, we also hear you and experience you in the tears and in the brokenness that are present in this sacred space whenever we gather here. Because when we come in here, we're real and we're vulnerable and we're available to you. And so like so many of the psalmists that praise and celebrate we cry out and we moan and we face the emptiness and our powerlessness in faces of tragedy of our own of those around us of strangers outside these doors down the street and across the globe we belong to each other your spirit weaves us together. Your spirit mends us, guides us, corrects us, makes us feel whole, gives us roots, gives us wings. And so, God, we come today as we do every day with a mix of joys and celebrations and heartache, back break angst and we invite you in to multiply that joy and to help us sort through find wisdom find meaning find a place to scream to let go to let ourselves experience the depths as well as the heights 
So Holy One, be with us in ways that we can feel, in ways beyond words, in ways that we can trust and lean into. And help us, O God, to find ways to be sturdy for each other, to be music makers for each other, to be ones who notice, who are aware and able and eager to belong to each other and to your earth that is always bursting forth with gifts. Holy One, hear us now as we pray aloud or silently for the individual concerns that we have, for the things that are only ours, and for the things that belong to all of us. Hear us as we express ourselves aloud or silently now. And because, O oh God, you bring us from our individual lives into community, because we are part of a story of your love, given, shared, multiplied, we come now with words that Jesus taught us as we sing together the Lord's Prayer. A few weeks ago, we talked about Matthew 25, which is in your bulletin here, this portion of how it is that we are committed to each other because we belong to each other, especially to people who are hungry or thirsty, a stranger needing clothing and shelter, those who are sick and lonely, those who are in prison and need to be visited. And we invited you to take the time of August through Labor Day to focus in on one of these particular missions, ministries, opportunities to be about God's love. And so we continue to remind you and encourage you to feel pulled, poked, prodded, to focus on one of these lines, do some research, find some partners, see what's going on in our community and across the globe, find out how we can plug into that. And then you'll let us know in September what came of that study, of that work, of that openness to possibilities. And so we want to be people of generosity. We want to be people that notice each other. We want to be acutely aware of our role in this big puzzle, what place we have in bringing more love, more justice, more relief and release and more joy. And so we receive your offerings, your financial support, your prayerful support, your work in and on behalf of the church. If you are so inclined, we have an offering plate up here, but we know you've all found ways to be supportive of the church when we have been apart one from another.
hearts and hands and voices who wondrous things have done, in whom this earth rejoices, who from our parents' arms have blessed us on our way, with countless gifts of love that we might share today. Amen. For our final hymn, we're going to sing around. We'll sing it together twice after the bells start, and then I'll point to this side, or I'll point to that side when it's your turn. The singers will help you, but please, even though you wear the mask, please sing out and sing loud. Go now in peace. I leave you with the blessing that my pastor of my childhood would say every Sunday morning, which just happens to be from the book of Ephesians. Now to God, who by the power at work within you is able to do far more abundantly than all you can ask or imagine. To God be all glory in the church and throughout God's world. Amen. We invite you to be seated for a moment for some announcements. Thank you again for choosing to be with us in person or remotely in this open and affirming congregation where all are accepted, no exceptions. We strive for limitless love, courageous action, and spirited inquiry. We want to wish a happy wedding anniversary today to Julie and Thad Stappenbeck. Happy birthday to Dottie Dwyer, who's in the house, and Mary Watson. A reminder that we invite you to exit these doors, and once you feel like you're far enough from the doorway, you can remove your mask. Some of you are going to take a few deep breaths, maybe greet some people across a bit of a distance, and then come back in to the Heritage Room at about 11.15 for our speaker series with Mary. That will be on Zoom as well as live in the Heritage Room. We have opportunities each week where you can engage in fellowship and in study and in all kinds of opportunities to weave ourselves together. An email goes out on Friday afternoon. If you didn't get that, let us know and we're happy to send that to you. There's an opportunity to have coffee outdoors this week, a mining for memories conversation about our past. And our midweek meditation this Wednesday evening is focused on kids and going back to school. Tyler Wessel's memorial service may take place on Wednesday evening. Uh, decisions are being made this afternoon. When I meet with Cindy and Ralph and Andrew, we will let you know via email about that celebration where we can grieve and give thanks for Tyler. Barry also has something he wants to talk about regarding Wednesday. Ooh, 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 ooh
That's right, folks. Choir is about to start. Rehearsals begin this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. back in the music room. We ask you to park in the back and come in the back door. We'll be right there on the right. Again, choir rehearsals start this Wednesday, and we're singing something special next week during the celebration that we have next week. Choir, 6.30 p.m. Here's the big finish. This is brought to you, paid or not paid, by your choir. A reminder that next Sunday, we will be worshiping outdoors behind the historic sanctuary in the shade, unlike our earlier summer worship services out in the back. We'll be celebrating the 150th anniversary of our historic sanctuary. The congregation is 183 years old, but the historic sanctuary is 150. You can read a little bit about that in your bulletin. We're also inviting you to find other ways to connect with each other, to belong to each other, to share friendships and stories and support. We have tickets to the Muni for August 27th to see On Your Feet, uh, see Dan Connors, who was our lay reader today, if you would like a ticket. We're working at Earth Dance Farm in North County on Saturday the 28th. Uh, we're not quite sure about the St. Louis Pride event. Uh, Pride was canceled in June of both last year and this year, and there's something happening uh, at the end of August, but things are not quite as steady as they were even a couple of weeks ago as that event is being planned, so stay tuned because we always have a presence there at Pride to make sure that people know how embraced and loved that they are by this open and affirming congregation. We have the dates in your bulletin today for the Alzheimer's walk and the crop walk that will take place this fall. We wanna make sure that you get that in your calendars. Michelle Singer is looking for a couple of new coffee makers because sometime in the fall, hopefully, we'll be back to making family, milling around in the gathering space and we need a couple more coffee preparers. If you know anyone that might have a lead on a reliable used car, contact Greg Schmaley. Greg has a friend who needs some help who is in a tough spot without a car. This Thursday night, we have our inquirer's session that will be in person in the Heritage Room and on Zoom for people that want to know a little bit more about this church and our United Church of Christ, people that want to be known. And so we have that opportunity from time to time to have a conversation with Parkway inquirers, and so you're invited to that. All of this is in your bulletin, and we hope that you will peruse that. Again, we invite you to exit through these doors, and if you're going to be coming back in, we hope some of you are, to debrief worship and talk about the state of the church, our church, and the wider church with Mary at about 11.15, unless it's 11.15 now, no, 11.08. So we have a little bit of time to take a breath and connect with each other and then cap come back in. Again, thank you for choosing to be with us today as we found ways to belong, to connect, to see what our place is in all of this that God is doing and God is about to do. Go in peace to listen, love, and serve. Amen. Mm -hmm.